Hi again. Page 207 of Armageddon Now, the last chapter, Jerusalem. What now? As the fear of an imminent Russian invasion declined in the United States, mention of the Battle of Armageddon was also greatly reduced. Another reason for the lessened interest in Armageddon was that the theology that had evolved did not necessarily identify the Russian invasion as that particular battle. Armageddon was still impending, however, and was not forgotten. As the Vietnam War developed, the question arose whether this new war would lead to Armageddon. An article in The King's Business assured readers that it would not, but explained the prophetic significance of the current crisis. Quote, well, for one thing, we are feeling intensely the threat of Red China. We have seen the development of the great northern power Russia. Egypt is presently a developed power engulfed in an Arab alliance. We are witnessing the development of a great Western confederacy in the form of a European common market. And now we are faced with the recognition of a vast Eastern power that is not only communistic, but also atheistic. Is not the stage set? End of quote. The late great planet Earth had an extensive discussion of the Battle of Armageddon. Lindsay said that the, the current buildup of the Russian Navy in the Mediterranean Sea was another significant sign of the possible nearness of Armageddon. The Russians, however, were to be defeated by supernatural power at the very beginning of the actual Battle of Armageddon, which was to be fought by the combined forces of Western civilization under the leadership of the Antichrist against the vast hordes of the Orient under the leadership of the Red Chinese. The Eastern powers alone would wipe out one-third of the Earth's population, but then Christ would appear to save mankind from self-destruction and would set up an earthly millennial kingdom. Russia's allies in the end-time battles continued to be topics for discussion. Germany remained nearly the, a unanimous choice, but there was bewildering debate over the others. Moody Monthly argued that the confederation would include Persia, modern Iran that is, Ethiopia, and Libya. But Martin R. Dahan, in the king's business, claimed the biblical Cush was not modern Ethiopia, but a neighbor of Persia. Another Moody author compromised by proclaiming that there were both an African and an Asian Cush. He also included China as an ally on the argument that there was no other place from which Ezekiel's many people with thee could be drawn. Wilbur M. Smith, in A Prediction Concerning India, in Moody Monthly, forecast Russia's future control over an alliance with India. Richard Dahan identified Turkey, along with Germany, as the potential Russian allies. Al Lindsay recognized the developing Third World forces by claiming that the Arab nations of Black Africa would be the future supporters of Russia in the Northern Confederacy. All in all, the varied interpretations presented a fascinating jigsaw of nations. During the 1960s and 70s, the theme of communism and atheism in Russia was also greatly diminished in the premillenarian literature. Communism and Russia were differenti differentiated in a 1964 article in Moody Monthly by John F. Walvoord converging signs of our times. He predicted, on the basis of scripture, that although Russia would eventually be defeated, nearly the whole world would come to embrace the atheistic religion of communism. This view was in agreement with the presentation made at the 1961 West Coast Prophetic Conference in Los Angeles. But in another 1964 article, Russia's Cold War on Christians, Moody Monthly claimed that Russia was engaged in a grim new push toward atheism by establishing an institute of scientific atheism to direct a coordinated effort to eliminate all religion from Russia. There was, however, very little of this type of anti-Russian harangue after that time. The Evangel magazine reported that the Soviets were easing their pressure on religion and that although in 1961 a target date of 1980 had been set, for the elimination of religion, there was no longer any mention of such a goal. That rings kind of strange, doesn't it? 40 years, in now 45 or more years into the future, where we have Russia looking, if anything, more religion, more religious than most of the Western nations. 
Without the popular fear of subversive communism, as in the McCarthy era, premillenarians could not ex exploit anti-Russian fear on the basis of ideological conflict, but had to rely more upon what remained of the big power threat of Russia. I'll put in a link to something J.C. Ryle said a long time ago, about 150 or 60 years ago, J.C. Ryle wrote that he viewed pantheism as more dangerous than atheism. Now, that was during the first wave of socialist uh, propaganda in Europe. Marx was alive, of course, at the time. But Ryle said, no, in the long run, pantheism would be the more, more dangerous enemy of Christianity. Something, by the way, that C.S. Lewis said later, two or three generations after that. Why is that? Why is pantheism so dangerous? Because if all is God, then all is good. See you next time.